one years ago, I interviewed about 100 women in science, ranging in age from 25 to 80. Um, the only criteria was that they were doing laboratory science. Um, most of them were biologists, but they were also physicists and mathematicians and chemists. Um, and um, and the, the book that I wrote then was a record of, indeed, of discrimination against women in science, um, and also about how heroic most of these women were. And they're heroic because of their great love of science. They are like artists. They discovered young that they loved, um, so that they could describe the physical world. And they came to love that so much that in time they couldn't do without describing the physical world. And out of that they became scientists. And it's very much like an artist um, who discovers a gift and soon can't do without it. And that make, that's what makes the artist. And so the, I found these women very much the same. They were nevertheless, uh, they certainly did in 1980 uh, experience a great deal of, uh, it was lessening of course, but a great deal of discrimination. So you know, it was really, for a woman of 80 at that time to have uh, embarked upon a life in science was really a brave thing. So that was that book 25 years ago. Now, last year, I looked up some of these women and, um, and met many new ones, and I sort of tried to bring the questions up to date. In other words, where, where are we in terms of discrimination against women in science today? And uh, a lot has changed, and a lot has not changed. Science, which indeed labored under the illusion that it's a meritocracy, and that anyone who is intellectually fit has a shot at it did not recognize its own discriminatory policies, which we still have in us, and which many, many people have fought successfully and unsuccessfully over the last years. And do you think there's hope for the future? I do indeed. And there's hope for the future. <laughs> Yes, I think things get better and better. I think uh, a young, wo young women uh, 25 years ago spoke with much more gravity. Today they speak with much more sparkle and affection and self-confidence, and they are certainly not downtrodden. So they have a fight in front of them, but they feel it's a fair fight. It's a fight that they can mount, let's put it that way. They feel that a lot more than they did in 1980. Um, even though these years have proven that, that that fight has been mounted and it grows and grows and grows. But the revolution is hardly won.